Hi there, Hama Yoon. So more essays. Great. Let's take a look at what you did this time. Um, this is the one about spending our money on weddings. Let's see what you said here. It has been often suggested that many people are spending a huge amount of money to finance their wedding ceremony. Okay. In my opinion, I think that throwing a lavish wedding party seems to have some basic advantages such as self-satisfaction and the creation of a festive atmosphere, but there are also drawbacks to be taken into account. Okay, yeah, that's true. Um, here's my question to you now. Which are more? The drawbacks or the benefits? Because look what the question clearly asks you. Do the benefits outweigh the disadvantages? So that should be clear here. Um, all you've really done here is tell us that um, there are both. There are basic advantages, but there are also drawbacks. So what I don't know the answer to is which is stronger. Okay? And again, as I think we talked about in your previous um, error correction, um, essay corrections, forgive me, this is, is pretty important if we want to get above a 7. All right, let's move on. Admittedly, there are some basic benefits of organizing a fancy wedding ceremony for the wedded couple. Firstly, the couple and their parents can invite as many relatives or friends as they want. Due to the presence of a significant number of people, this creates a festive atmosphere. Use the exact same expression up here. Uh, where everyone is enjoying themselves. You have to enjoy something always. It needs an object. So you enjoy yourself, you enjoy the party, you enjoy something. All right, so where everyone is enjoying themselves and having a quality time. For example, in Asian society, there are several matrimonial functions which are conducted before the wedding day, such as a singing ceremony and designing a bride and groom's body with myrtle paste. Hmm. These functional, you don't mean these functional, I think you mean these functions, uh, definitely create a festive, hmm, festive atmosphere. But now it's the third time you've used this expression, festive atmosphere, festive atmosphere, festive atmosphere. Okay, you could have said celebratory, which would have been nice. You could have said um, many other things. Um, we'll have to brainstorm a few. Um, an era, uh, not an era, an air of celebration, okay? Um, an air of... Um, festivity. Okay, so there were other things that you could have said here. Secondly, these functions definitely create a festive atmosphere. Okay, secondly, extra an, you need the article here, an extravagant wedding celebration tends to give a sense of satisfaction as it is usually done once in a lifetime and considered to be one of mm, one of the life's goals. This is what you're trying to say, but it's awkward. So it is considered to be a life goal. Okay? Those couples who came from privileged family backgrounds also get an opportunity to display their wealth ostentatiously. In this way, they can also receive appreciation and praise, singular, about arrangements. Okay, let's see. Um... I felt like you could have extended this a little more. What kind of praise? Uh, their good taste? Their, um, I mean, what kind of praise do they receive? Uh, their creativity? Their good taste? Their um, showing respect to their family and their guests by all of the attention to detail that they have paid? So you could have extended that a little further. Um... Let me see what else. Now, here, you could have said that what would have been nice is if you had linked all of these festivities back to the idea of money, okay? So, because one could argue like this myrtle paste thing. Can you not do it if you don't have money? All right, do you have to spend a lot of money on this to do it? So, um... A lot of this was fine, but you probably should have made the link to money uh, clearer, okay? Um, let's see. And these functions, uh, secondly. Okay, I felt like this needed a little something. You said... Uh, extravagant wedding celebrations tend to give a sense of satisfaction as it is usually done once in a lifetime considered to be a life goal. Okay, great. So 
uh, w tell me about the sense of satisfaction. Tell me about uh, why it has to be expensive. Like, why would it not create a sense of satisfaction if it was done a little more frugally? So, a little more detail there, I felt, would have been necessary. Now, you did actually have um, a number of main ideas here. I think I counted... I see that you wrote here firstly and secondly. I think I counted more like three main ideas. You could have condensed these a little more and um, and uh, just developed the actual arguments themselves a little more. Okay, that's the takeaway here. Let's move on. Nevertheless, despite the advantages above, I believe a married couple could face serious repercussions, plural, from arranging a big budget wedding. One potentially dangerous problem is that showing extravagance, with an E, not a Y, during their marriage ceremony can result in financial hardships. Consequently, they may fall into a debt trap if they do not belong to a rich family or have savings. Eventually, the couple has to incur the burden of debt just for a wedding ceremony. This money spent could have been spent on more important tasks. Like what? Another obvious issue is that these types of lavish matrimonial ceremonies, plural here, IES, cannot be a laid-back celebration, as there will be hundreds of people, and the ceremony will become less personal, less relaxed, will become less personal, less relaxed, and a less intimate atmosphere. The guests would be uncomfortable because of the crowd and less inhibited, mm, no, and more inhibited, okay, to enjoy himself here and dance. Likewise, a couple uh, would have to perform, we're talking about theoretically here, so would have to perform hosting duties and manage the whole event, and this is a lot to do when while you are getting married. As a result, the bride and groom will not be able to enjoy and embrace everything. Okay, um, fine. So to conclude, I think that, I think high budget marriage ceremonies are clearly a waste of money. Hence, financial difficulties in large and uncomfortable crowds, uh, S, far outweigh any of the minor benefits that could result from these lavish celebrations. Okay, um, there were some areas here, as I mentioned throughout the essay, that I thought you could have uh, developed a little better. Um, it's a long essay. You clearly wrote quite a bit here. Um, but there were some areas that I think you could have explored a little more and maybe some things that you could have left out. Um, there were some grammatical things happening, but nothing too, too, too serious. A lot of uh, repetitive vocabulary, that's for sure, especially with this whole festive atmosphere, festive atmosphere that we saw in that first body paragraph a lot. Um, other than that, it's a well-written essay. Uh, you've done a really good job. So uh, let's take a look now at your task one. Okay, here it is. Pie chart, school subject preferences already. The pie chart, careful, it's two pie charts, so make sure you indicate that. The pie charts compare the percentage of eight school subjects Eight school subject preferences, hold on, let's try it again. The pie charts compare the percentage of eight school subject preferences in New South Wales from 2014 to 17. Generally speaking, between 2014 and 2017, there were major changes in the level of preference of school subject among students in New South Wales. Fine. In 2014, geography and mathematics were the most popular school subject in New South Wales each accounting, I-N-G. That's what you want to do here. For more than one-fourth, no S, of the total percentage of subject preference. Collectively, these subjects constitute no four, more than half of the total percentage. The second most popular subject was physics. Well, it's not really second, it's actually third, no? Because you just said that mm, geography and maths were one and two tied. So, um, I think more appropriate here is to say that the third most popular subject was physics, which stood at just below a fifth, followed in fourth and fifth place by what? I'm so confused here. So the second most popular subject was physics, which stood at just below a fifth, followed 
in fourth and fifth place by and physical education. All right, you're missing something here. I think you missed, I don't know what the fourth place is. You can look it up. I suspect it's biology. No. I'm really confused here because I see, hold on a second. We have math, we have geography. Well, first we have geography, then we have math, then we have physics, and then we have uh, biology. All right, so physics and biology are third and fourth place. Uh, let's see what you wrote here. Physics. All right, I think you're missing biology here. All right, accounting. Why do we say accounting? Because it means which accounted. Okay, so accounting is how we write it with the present participle. For just over, uh, just above half a quarter, half a quarter, half a quarter. Half a quarter is what, 12%? Why don't you just say that? Uh, and 8% respectively. Uh, nevertheless, IT, history and chemistry were the least preferred subjects in the given region. Okay, around 1% each. Fine. One of the most striking features is that in 2017, biology became the most preferred school subject and the proportion almost doubled, followed in second place by physics. Another striking feature is that history rose 16 times the 2014 figure, not two. Um, the proportion of geography and mathematics dropped by 9% and 15% in 2015, whereas these subjects were the most favorite in... Mm. You don't have to say the most favorite because favorite by itself implies superlative. So just get rid of the most. So these subjects were favorites, uh, plural, in 2014. Likewise, the percentage of IT and PE preference dropped also, also dropped in 2017, which accounted for 3.4. Okay. Uh, what happened to chemistry? Isn't this the one where chemistry all of a sudden disappears? Yup, it does. And that's pretty important. Um, and you didn't mention it at all in this paragraph. So for me, that's a pretty big deal that it just disappeared off the face of this pie chart. Um, I think it was absolutely worth mentioning, and I think it's a shame you didn't because that's going to cost you. Okay? Um, in summary, biology, physics, and history had seen increments in their proportions whilst remaining subjects preference percentages. What? All right, that's a little awkward here, all this expression. Um, what you're trying to say, I think, is that, in summary, biology, physics, and history saw increases in their proportion while the remaining subjects uh, dropped, well, while the percentages for the remaining subjects dropped in 2017. That's what you're trying to say here. Okay, so what we're having here today, Homayun, is a little awkwardness in some of your expression. Um, and for me, the biggest problem was that you did not mention chemistry. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, so here it's a really minimal uh, percentage, but here it's not even factored in at all. And I think that's a big deal because all of a sudden, from eight preferences, from eight subjects, you go to seven. Um, so I think that was important to mention. All right, go ahead and correct these, return them corrected, um, add to your error correction list, and send us another set, okay? Good luck, and I'll be waiting to see what you write next.